Welcome to all of you as we gather today to remember and to celebrate the life of Willie Weaver, our brother in Christ. I'm Pastor Monica Wiesner, the pastor here at St. Matthew's, and I've been blessed to have been Willie's pastor for the last 12 years. The family has asked that I extend an invitation on their behalf. At the end of the funeral service, we will go to the cemetery for the committal and then return back here to the fellowship hall for refreshments, and everyone is welcome to both. We're gathered today to bid farewell to someone who was granted the grace of a long, full life. We're naturally saddened by Willie's death, but we're also grateful for the many blessings that God has given us through him. God gives each of us many gifts in this life, but God's greatest gift to us are the people who are dear to us and who are good to us. And in Willie, God gave us such a gift. So let's take a moment now to quiet our hearts and minds, and then we will begin this service of remembrance and celebration. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, source of all mercy and giver of comfort, graciously tend those who mourn, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to thank you all for coming. I'm going to read uh, a memory from Rita, my cousin. My fondest memory of Uncle Billy are his love for his family, his sweets, and especially those sweet chips. Staying with Dr. Lydia and Uncle Billy at the cottage brings a smile to my face as he has made sure I got to the beach with everyone, even if it meant Dr. Lydia had to paint all the window frames herself. <laughs> and on a final note, we know the day Uncle Billy left us the Blue Jays won 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. The Jays having technical difficulties with getting runs across the plate. And Thursday, I truly believe Dr. Billy was one of the angels in the game. Love for Dr. Billy and Preston Peake. This one's from my brother, Leo Polchak. Mm -hmm. I remember during school summer holidays, getting up early and dragging my tired bones next door and climbing into the Will John truck and waiting for Billy to come out and we head off for another day of hard work in the cement business. Willie would come out and giggle at a sad, tired lad. But these are the summers I remember, the hard work and Willie smiling through the day made the workday pass quickly and convinced me that school was my best option. <laughs> now I remember working from the building in the summer as well. I don't remember dragging myself to the truck, but I remember dragging myself back across the lawn home at the end of the day. As mentioned earlier, really loved sports. Always listened to the ball game, the Blue Jays. But did you know he also was a football star? One of my earliest recollections of playing sports with Uncle Billy was Bill and Orville came from the United States. Now I know they were married to people from the family, but I just remember Bill and Orville. We had a football game. Uncle Billy got the pass. He was making it for the goal. Leo and I got to him first, missed the tackle, but ripped the shirt right off him. <laughs> now, that about ended the game. Only because Uncle Billy still had the ball, but now Dunleja was chasing him with her luncha because she was upset he ripped his shirt. <laughs> I remember Uncle Billy and Dunleja taking us camping at Grand Bend. I think we went with the little family and they took us along. With Uncle Billy and working for Uncle Billy, he taught me three things. One, how to square off a house wedding. Two, to make sure that everything you did, you did it perfectly. And three, if you had a sandwich left over at the end of the day from your lunch, you chucked it out the truck window on the way home because if you took it home, you may not 
get as much lunch the next day. <laughs> so we never took anything home from the lunch bag. I will always remember Uncle Billy in the later years. He was always interested in our family and our children, always interested in how work was going. He will be missed. Presenting the next generation down, and this uh, first is from Stephanie and Brittany. Uncle Billy, you were an amazing man and a great, great uncle. You were genuine, thoughtful, and always smiling, especially when we brought you German candies and were hopeful and canuffle with extra potatoes. Favorite memories would be when we would come to visit and you would go into your chocolate stash and give us full chocolate bars, usually coffee crisp, to take home with us. He loved his chocolate, and we loved his love for it. And we will always remember when asked, How are you doing, Uncle Billy? And you would answer, Could be better. Could be worse. Thank you for your positive outlook in life. Love you always. And this is uh, on behalf of myself and uh, Derek, Christine, and Kelly and Stephen. Yeah, if you don't know me, my name is Graham Gessler. Um, I'm a great nephew. We're all great nephews and nieces. Uh, but none of us felt like great nephews and nieces. Um, we were grandkids. Um, Uncle Billy and Tante Lydia are our third set of grandparents. And, and that was just a, a real blessing to have um, that much family and that much love. Visiting Uncle Billy as a child contained certain constants depending on where you lived. Um, if you lived from far away, I lived next door. If you lived far away, when you came to the house, he would start jingling his pocket, because he always had change in his pocket. And you knew you could come and if you'd get a quarter. Um, that used to be exciting. Um, but uh, because I lived next door, I didn't get in on the quarter tradition unless some of my cousins were there. So I was really great to see them. <laughs> really happy. But uh, the other tradition, as uh, Stephanie and Brittany mentioned in their note, was, um, was this. Anytime you came to Uncle Billy's house, you could guarantee this was going to be in that little table in the upstairs sitting room, and he'd say, go get something. And you knew what he meant, and the way you'd go. And, um, Mom thinks that he had Kit Kats there too. Did anyone any remember Kit Kats? No. Yeah, Mom? No. Coffee crisp. <laughs> that was all that was there. Um, but the funny part is, I don't remember him ever eating one. I'm sure he did, but I never saw it. But it was always there for us and for me, for my kids. Uh, my boys have memories of coming to Uncle Billy and Tante Lydia's, but they get four packs sometimes. So um, I felt a little jealous, so I just thought I'd share the jealousy around with uh, my cousins. Uncle Billy was a games player, and one of the common experiences we all had as cousins was playing rummy uh, or other card games with Uncle Billy. Uh, for me, while Oma, um, our great grandmother, was one who I'd say taught me the numbers and the names of the cards, Uncle Billy was the one who actually taught me to play cards. Um, he was the card sharp at any card game. And most Saturday afternoons growing up, I spent playing cards with Grandpa and Uncle Billy. Uh, and I have said for years, I learned how to play cards with Uncle Billy. I learned how not to play cards for my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Grandpa. <laughs> uh, and for those of you who play Scott, I learned how to play Mill from my dad. But Uncle Billy was the one that he would play hands that I was sure he was going to lose and he would pull it out and he would win, sometimes by just one point. He had it just calculated to a T. And that's, that was kind of the challenge was to beat Uncle Billy and for me to learn to play cards like him. Uh, the only German I know is actually from playing Scott with Grandpa and Uncle Billy. Um, so here's my